hours passed, and Rain Jexter was beginning to lose hope of ever finding civilization. But often when hope seems lost, salvation proves otherwise. A small rustic town came into view from over a crest in the desert terrain. Oh, thank the force! Rain sighed with dry relief. Dragging his feet across the paved ground, Rain entered town and burst into the closest building, the cantina. Denizens of the goddess were alone to their resources, pouring their complaints and sorrows into an icy cool vice of their own choice. What's your beverage, mate? called the tender. Water for Clemens' sake, Rain replied. A cold glass clangs onto the metal counter and Rain downed the pint in seconds, ignoring the strings of water running between his whiskers. Ain't that a new face? I take it your ship made its bed out in the dunes. Huh? A Nikto in a trench coat and hat takes a seat near Rain. Jura, Southstone. I'm the town sheriff. Got a name, Harry Sport? Rain Jexter. Say, is there a place to rest my head for a day or so? J just to get my bearings? Sure there is. Most popular place in town. Arden's Motel across the street past the Mercantile. Can't miss it. Thanks. I think I'll enjoy a few refills before I head over. Not a drop of moisture out there. Welcome to the Goddess, my friend. The afternoon light was dipping close to evening, and though Judah had not yet found his destination, he felt the pool was growing surer than before. He was so close. Then a yellow flicker in the distance. He drew nearer. The yellow flicker began to take shape. A rectangular object in the distance. He persisted even closer. Alas, the object of his curiosity became clear. A golden monolith of yellow light reaching up to the stars. Its foundation, a small boulder like a staging ground over a watery oasis surrounded by plant life. Jura wasted no breath. He raced for the water, scooping the water up to his mouth to quench his thirst. The water was sweet and clear, and was cool to the tongue. It only took one sip for his body to be completely refreshed, yet he couldn't help but consume more. The goddess Navel welcomes you, Jedi, a voice called. Judah immediately reached for his lightsaber and squeezed the activation button, but no blade heeded his call. Who are you? Show yourself, Judah demanded. Your kyber may be alive, but its electric companion hinders it from defending you with its blade. Judah reluctantly put his saber back to his belt. I felt pulled here to this oasis. Reveal yourself so I may understand. Emerging from the bushes was a pale monk adorned in white. My name is Deaxis Mun, Oracle of the Goddess Navel. This is my guard, Ulu. A massively tall and lanky creature crawled out from behind the monolith and blinks its bulbous eyes at Judah, measuring him for his character. If it is clarity you seek, join the water and see. Deaxis simply spoke. That's simple, huh? Judah whispered. Judah waded into the waters until completely submerged. Suddenly, water rushed up his nose. He looked above him, expecting to see the surface of the water, but gasped air from his lungs when all he found was clay. He looked below him and realized he was upside down inside the oasis. He immediately rotated his body right side up and crawled out of the water. What just happened? I somehow was turned upside down. Cross the desert to the east and you will find a small town. Good luck, Jedi. 
Deaxis Mun and Ulu calmly step behind the monolith, and they were gone. That was it? I came all this way to get trapped on a planet with no way out? To go swimming? Rain Jexter approached Arden's motel. The person greeting him was a fair-skinned female behind a counter. Room for one, I'm guessing. Uh, make it two, please. How much? First night's free. You want another day, you'll have to earn your keep. We don't accept whatever credits you brought from other worlds. We go by tokens here. Only found here. If there's a refresher in your room, feel free to use the accessories. Need anything? Ring the bell. Name's Arden. Thanks, Arden. I'm Rain Jexter. Rain Jexter. She spoke as she wrote down the name. Thanks. Take room 212, second floor, take a left. Rain enters his motel room. It's dusty, but maintained. It'll do. All right, Judah. Let's hope you're doing just as well. Judah Kimono enters the town. Night had fallen. Most of the shops and facilities were closed for the night, but the sound of laughing children and strange sounds bellowing from a building glowing with warm light got his attention. Judah entered the large building. Children sat in front of a large silver sheet while a human spun a rotor over a focused candlelight. Silly images bounced off of the silver while other sentient species hid behind the sheet making all sorts of choreographed sound effects. He'd never seen anything quite like it. In a galaxy of incredible technology, he was warmed by the ingenuity and creativity these people had. Then the air became cold. Judah watched his breath swell into the air. He shivered. His fingers touched the hilt of his saber purely out of instinct. Get away from the children, he thought. He backed away from the building, so he stood in the middle of the paved road. The cold blue sky and the hour of the shadow covered everything in a nightly veil. A cloaked presence stood before him in the darkness. Who, what are you? Judah choked. The cloaked thing moved. A blade of red kyber emerged from inside the black. The veil was pulled away and a frightening chill like lightning stung down Judah's spine and a tear of confusion welled in his eyes. Standing before Judah was Judah himself.